everyone, my name is Eric Briggs Dunas. Welcome to my vlog, Briggs Spot. So our discussion for today is all about the cost of taxation. We will look at how taxes affect the welfare, the economic well-being of participants in market. In short, we see how high the price of the civilized society can be since taxes are what we pay for civilized society. So what is the purpose of taxation? So the government enacts taxes to raise funds or revenues and that revenues must come out from someone's pocket so maybe from taxpayers workers mm, buyers and sellers so let us focus on buyers and sellers so both buyers and sellers are worse off when a good is taxed why why is that so because a tax raises the price buyers pay and lowers the price sellers receive to fully understand how taxes affect the economic well-being, we must compare the reduced welfare of buyers and sellers to the amount of the revenue government raises. And the tools of consumer and producer surplus allow us to make that comparison. The analysis will show that the cost of taxes to buyers and sellers exceeds the revenue raised by the government. The deadweight loss of taxation it doesn't matter whether a tax on a good is charged on buyers or sellers of the good. When a tax is charged on buyers, the demand curve shifts downward by the size of the tax. When it is charged on sellers, the supply curve shifts upward by that amount. In either case, when the tax is enacted, the price paid by buyers rises and the price received by sellers falls. In the end, buyers and sellers share the burden of the tax regardless of how it is charged. So in this figure, this figure doesn't show a shift in either the supply or demand curve, although one curve must shift. Which curve shifts depends on whether the tax is charged on sellers, so the supply curve shifts, or buyers, the demand curve shifts. We can simplify the graphs by not bothering to show the shift. The key result for our purpose here is that the tax places a wedge between the price buyers pay and the price sellers receive. Because of this tax wedge, the quantity sold falls below the level that would be sold without a tax. In other words, a tax on a good causes the size of the market for the good to shrink. How a tax affects market participants Now let's use the tools of welfare economics to measure the gains and losses from a tax on a good. To do this, we must take into account how the tax affects buyers, sellers, and the government. So the benefit received by buyers in a market is measured by consumer surplus. So consumer surplus is the amount buyers are willing to pay for the good minus the amount they actually pay for it. And the benefit received by sellers in a market is measured by producer surplus. So producer surplus is the amount sellers receive for the good minus their cost. So what about the third interested party, the government? So if T is the size of the tax and the Q is the quantity of goods sold, then the government gets the total tax revenue of T times Q. So it can use this tax revenue to provide services such as roads, police, and public education or to help the needy, etc. So therefore, to analyze how taxes affect economic well-being, we use tax revenue to measure the government's benefit from the tax. So keep in mind, however, that this benefit actually accrues not to government but to those on whom the revenue is spent. So take a look at this figure. So this figure shows that the government's tax revenue is represented by the rectangle or the colored rectangle between the supply and demand curves. So the height of this rectangle is the size of the tax, T, and the width of the rectangle is the quantity of the good sold, Q. Because a rectangle's area is its height times its width, this rectangle's area is T times Q, which equals the tax revenue. To see how a tax affects welfare, we begin by considering welfare before the government has imposed a tax. So the figure shows the supply and demand diagram and marks the key areas with the letter A through F. Without a tax, the price and quantity are found at the intersection of the supply and demand curves. The price is P1 and the quantity sold is Q1. Because the demand curve reflects buyers' willingness to pay, consumer surplus is the area between the demand curve and the price A plus B plus C. Similarly, because the supply curve reflects a seller's cost, producer surplus is the area between the supply curve and the price, D plus E plus F. In this case, 
because there is no tax, tax revenue equals zero. Total surplus or the sum of consumer in producer surplus equals the area A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. In other words, total surplus is the area between the supply and demand curves up to the equilibrium quantity. Now, consider welfare after the tax is enacted. The price paid by buyers rises from P1 to PP. So consumer surplus now equals only area A or the area below the demand curve and above the buyer's price. So the price received by sellers falls from P1 to PS. So producer surplus now equals only area F or the area above the supply curve and below the seller's price. The quantity sold falls from Q1 to Q2 and the government collects tax revenue equal to the area B plus D. To compute total surplus with the tax, we add consumer surplus, producer surplus, and tax revenue. Thus, we find the total surplus is area A plus B plus D plus F. We can now see the effects of the tax by comparing welfare before and after the tax is enacted. So the tax causes consumer surplus to fall by the area B plus C and producer surplus to fall by the area D plus E. So tax revenue rises by the area B plus D. Not surprisingly, the tax makes buyers and sellers worse off and the government better off. So the change in total welfare includes the change in consumer surplus which is negative and the change in producer surplus which is also negative and the change in tax revenue which is positive. When we add these three pieces together, we find that the total surplus in the market falls by the area C plus E. Thus, the losses to buyers and sellers from a tax exceed the revenue raised by the government. The fall in total surplus that result when a tax or some other policy distorts a market outcome is called deadweight loss. So the area C plus E measures the size of the deadweight loss. So again, deadweight loss is the fall in total surplus that results from a market distortion such as a tax. The determinants of the deadweight loss. So what determines whether the deadweight loss from a tax is large or small? So the answer is the price elasticities of supply and demand, which measures how much the quantity supplied and quantity demanded respond to changes in the price. So let's consider first how the elasticity of supply affects the size of the deadweight loss. In panel A, the supply curve is relatively inelastic. So quantity supplied responds only slightly to changes in the price. In panel B, the supply curve is relatively elastic. So quantity supplied responds substantially to changes in the price. Notice that the deadweight loss or the area of the triangle between the supply and demand curves is larger when the supply curve is more elastic. And now let's look at how the elasticity of demand affects the size of the deadweight loss. So here the supply curve and the size of the tax are held constant. So in panel C, the demand curve is relatively inelastic and the deadweight loss is small. In panel D, the demand curve is more elastic and the deadweight loss from the tax is large. So the lesson from this figure is easy to explain. A tax has a deadweight loss because it induces buyers and sellers to change their behavior. So the tax raises the price paid by buyers so they consume less. At the same time, the tax lowers the price received by sellers so they produce less. Because of these changes in the behavior, the size of the market shrinks below the optimum. So the elasticities of supply and demand measure how much sellers and buyers respond to the changes in the price and therefore determine how much the tax distorts the market outcome. Hence, the greater the elasticities of supply and demand, the greater the deadweight loss of a tax. Hey, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share for more discussion.